Hey guys, welcome to a super super wet vlog. Um, today is Sunday and I thought I'd vlog because I'm actually on a tour, it's a walking tour of Glasgow's kind of architecture as part of the Festival of Museums. So I thought I'd do a weekly vlog because I've got a few events oh, over the next week. I'm at the top of the lighthouse just now and I've just climbed so many stairs so I'm a little bit out of breath. Um, but the view is fantastic so I will show you that. Just climbed all those stairs. Kind of undoable because there's so many people on it and stuff and I just wouldn't get good shots for it so I thought I'd wait till now and then fill you in what's happening. So we've been around quite a lot of the videos, uh, a lot of the videos, been around quite a lot of the different places in Glasgow. One of the really interesting things is you know all the different influences in Glasgow architecture um, in terms of all the different kind of periods that you can see reflected in such a kind of small um, area like literally right across the road from each other at some point. Okay guys, so I'm aware that this started as a vlog and it's now turned into more of a like formal video but going on that tour today really has kind of emphasised for me something that I really feel that I need to talk about, something I ran about in real life an awful lot so um, why I've not had a rant about it on YouTube yet, who knows, but no time like the present. So today I was basically the youngest person on that tour by a good 20 years, like it's not like I was the youngest person by a couple of years, it was like me and the guides who were students of the art school and then everyone else was probably over 50. And the reason that really really irritates me is because if you don't use what you have when you've got it you're going to lose it. It's like people, I was at an exhibition yesterday as well, a hundred years of this place existing or whatever and they were talking about the local community and one of the things they were talking about was the shopping availability in the local area um, and the difference in it from 100 years ago or whatever until today and they interviewed somebody who was a little bit older, not quite 100 but had used the shops um, when they were more as they were. One of the things that she was saying in an interview was that you couldn't even buy a pair of slippers in this area now if you tried. Yeah she was just kind of emphasising the, the fact that people don't use their local stores now um, and the fact that because of that the stores are all gone because they're not making any money and they're all replaced with fast food places and stuff and then everyone wants to complain about that but nobody wants to actually pay the higher price that supporting independent retailers comes at. Everyone wants value, everyone wants everything as cheap as possible. People don't think about the manufacturing process, about the sourcing process, um, about why costs are higher with independent retailers. Um, I fully believe independent retailers are always worth supporting. I definitely try to when I can. I know it's not you know, within everyone's budget to do that but it really irritates me when nobody wants to support that but then they want to moan when it's gone and I think we're really heading, um, it, it could end up just being completely the same for the arts. Um, not because that tour today was empty but because it was empty of anyone of my generation and do you know what guys, realistically it doesn't, my gran loved that tour um, and she was talking about some of her friends that would love it and she was talking about the fact that my grandpa would love it and she and I have had a look through the other tours that they do and we've picked out a couple that we're definitely going to book to go on um, over the next couple of months because it was a fantastic tour, I really can't recommend it enough but do you know what, it makes no difference that my gran and her friends want to go on that tour because this sounds completely morbid um, but they're going to die. Now we're all going to die obviously, mortality uh, it comes with that, that you, you, we are all going to die, but it's it's how, it's not the responsibility of that generation anymore, it's our generation's responsibility, we are the generation of now, 
um, and we have to work to safeguard these things. And you know what, if nobody from our generation is turning up to things like that that show that we support the arts, they're going to go and then we're going to moan about it. And like, it's so important that we support the arts and I mean, do you know what, yeah, let's address why is it important that we support the arts. It's important that we support the arts because it's the arts are our freedom, they're our liberty. It's this government that want to cut the arts left, right and centre. Well, do you know what? It's the fact that the arts don't please the government and that's absolutely why we should be supporting them. Um, we've got people outside Downing Street at the moment protesting the fact that we've voted in a Conservative government and do you know what? I know this probably sounds really hypocritical coming from me because I come from a background where a lot of my contemporaries will have been the people who voted Conservative and, and I'm aware that this come across as quite patronising um, because, <laughs> like, this sounds terrible, but it doesn't really affect me if the Conservatives are in government. I don't really suffer from it. But you know what? A lot of people do. Um, and I don't think you need to be one of the people who's suffering to appreciate that other people are suffering. Um, and we've got an issue with our government. And one of the best ways that people can, ex can explore their issues and can stand up for the people who don't have a voice and who aren't represented it's through the arts. Now that's been the same way through history. Um, even if we look at Shakespeare's writing, uh, that was very much what my dissertation was on, was the role of women um, in Renaissance England, looking at the fact that they had a single female monarch, Elizabeth I, who um, that was such a, a, dis a source of discontention in the time. How was that reflected in his writing? And see it if we look at poetry, Robert Burns, lots of his work reflective of the politics of the time. The Crucible by Arthur Miller, one of the most famous reflections um, of a playwright on the current political state. And one of our UK versions, John Osborne, Look Back in Anger. This is really a defining moment in the canon of theatre. This really sparked the movement that they then called the Angry Young Men. Now, do you know what? That is so, so patch, such a patronising little name, all these angry young men. Hmm, yes. Do you know what? And if you look at the reviews that Look Back in Anger got when it opened, um, quite famously Tynan's the only theatre critic to actually have said anything good about it. Everyone else pretty much slated it because it wasn't what they were used to. It wasn't what theatre was made of. It wasn't for the people who went to the theatre. Um, but do you know what? That doesn't mean those people, that doesn't mean that people who aren't your typical theatre goers shouldn't have had a voice. And do you know what? It's now very accepted that those people are expressed in theatre. Um, if we look at in terms of, you know, like Joe Corey, um, in Scotland we've got Ina Lamont Stewart, Men Should Weep, that kind, of, uh, that kind of idea. So the arts have historically always provided a voice um, to people who are not represented by the government, to people who are not represented by the establishment, to people who, you know, the establishment doesn't support them, doesn't... Um, fulfill their needs and doesn't basically do its job to support these people and yeah do you know what it's really really patronizing that name the angry young men it really really annoys me but do you know what maybe they were angry because you know what I'm angry I'm part of the first generation of people who are going to be worse off than their parents I'm part of the first generation of people who are going to be worse off than the generation before them that is disgraceful um that that's actually the situation that we're in. And do you know what? I am angry about it because the reason that we are in that situation is because of decisions that were made and decisions that were voted for by politicians who were voting at a time when the people who are now suffering from that were at an age where they couldn't vote. We didn't have a say. So do you know what? We have to express ourselves through other ways and that is absolutely through the arts. And today, the, the thing that I was on today was about architecture and it was classical art that were running it. But I mean the arts, like literature, theatre, um, you know, your actual arts as in like things like today, like your architecture. In terms of like the movements that happened within the architecture, one of the architecture, I just said architecture, didn't I? Yeah, architecture guys, say your right words. Um, but like, it's just so important that we do support the arts because they do absolutely give a voice to people that are not in the mainstream, that are not listened to. As you guys know, I've just finished a theatre studies degree um, and one of the things that I was writing about was verbatim theatre and one of the, I've got a quote from Robin Sones that I quoted in my essay. Now I'm probably not going to quote this word for word but I will write it in the description box to make sure you've got the right 
like word for word version of it, but it's something along the lines of the traditional methods of reporting wherein we expect a certain degree of truth and responsibility um, are no longer reliable. Only in the arts is the study of the human human condition considered more important than money. So it's up to artists to ask the relevant questions. Now he was specifically talking about in relation to verbatim theatre. Um, in terms of being political theatre, in terms of it not in terms of it telling the stories of people who were not reported about in our mainstream media because our mainstream media is controlled by the government. Let's let's just get that down there. Um, it's it's all to do with the behind the scenes private funding, it's to do with who's donating to what political parties and that our media is absolutely dominated by that. Our media is totally funded um, by tycoons, by people who have a stance politically. Um, whereas the arts tend to be a lot more liberal and a lot more open. They don't necessarily say there's a right or a wrong party in the way that papers etc do. Um, and the arts will ask the questions and there will be a representer for you within the arts and it's so important that we support that because it's so important that we keep that alive because if we get if we lose our arts and we lose our, uh, the accessibility of the arts and we lose funding for the arts then we lose that voice that's absolutely what it comes down to the arts provide this voice and this platform for us that we cannot lose it's like I, I can't stress enough if you're unhappy with the, the running of anything and it doesn't even have to be that you're anti-conservative given that they're the current um you know political party in power it can be uh, you know f feminism you, you guys know mass feminist here the arts massively have provided a platform for feminism um the national theater of scotland recently just did rights which is about um which was a piece of verbatim theater about uh, female genital mutilation and it, like the arts provide the platform for all these things to be discussed and to be talked about and to be put into the mainstream and we cannot, cannot, cannot as a generation decide that we're not going to support that because then it disappears. Okay, that is the bottom line. We either support this or it goes. And do you know what? It's not expensive to support it. The majority of museums are free. Um, it's usually a kind of there's a donation box as you go in and yes, if you can donate, please do because honestly, if every person that walked in um, donated like it, just what they could, just the loose change in their pocket, it would make a massive difference over the space of like a year or whatever. But do you know what? If you can't donate, just go go and up the head count of these places and show that there is a need for them and show that people are visiting them. Um, you can go to the theatre super, super cheaply. Like, of course, if you're going to go to something that, uh, like within Glasgow at least. Um, if you're going to go to something that's on at the King's Theatre or the Theatre Royal, you're going to pay a lot for it. If you want to go down to the Tron, you can probably find something for like six pounds or something like that. Like, do you know what? That is, that is a glass of wine or a cocktail or something that you can just forego one night. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't stress enough how important it is. And one of the uh, buildings on today's tour was. Um, a building that's really really dilapidated and the tour guide was saying it would take a million pounds to restore that building. Now that sounds like a lot of money to your average person but you know what a million pounds is actually nothing. As weird a statement as that is. When you're looking at people who donate, who allocate funding and if you look at the bloody salaries that we give footballers, I'm sorry. I know that is a go-to argument for everybody but honestly the amount of money that is in sports is ludicrous. Um, I also actually think the amount of money that's in art at the top end, if you look at, um, what is it, in Notting Hill when Julia Roberts' character uh, at the dinner party and he says, oh so how much did you make? And she's like, 10 million dollars. And he's like, oh right, okay. Apparently that's the reported figure that she earned for doing Notting Hill. Um, that's ridiculous, especially given that was like, what, early 90s? you can't even begin to fathom the amounts of money that are being handed out and then we've got things like buildings that are fantastic representations of our culture and of the way that our culture has progressed in terms of where we've come from um, in terms of the influences that were influencing our architecture um, to actually be giving up a, a, an image of what that was in a, a really interesting living museum in that it's a building that 
I can't fathom that. I can't actually fathom why we can't renovate a building that would take a million pounds to renovate when we can pay actors and actresses and footballers and all these people incredible amounts of money for... I, I mean, they're, I'm not trying to say that they're not talented, but it's just a bit obscene to be quite frank in, in comparison to the fact that we have doctors who are actually saving lives and not getting paid those amounts of money. It's actually a bit obscene and ridiculous the way that we allocate money. Now, as those of you who have watched my accent tag know, Glasgow is not my home city. I think of Glasgow as my adopted city, but I love it a lot. It really is my home city because I've lived here for the majority of my life, but my formative years weren't here, so yeah, whatever. But Glasgow as a city has a really bad reputation. Now, I think it's totally unjust because I've never experienced any of the things that people seem to associate with Glasgow. I've never had a knife pulled on me. I've never I've never known anyone who carries a knife. Do you know what? I'm not saying these things don't exist. I'm sure they do in the way that they do in any city. But do you know what? If, you're, if we've got a city here that's got such a reputation of poverty, um, the arts, always the arts, like, and I absolutely believe that the arts is a fantastic way to give people a platform and a voice um, and a way of expressing themselves. One of the, like, one of my favourite plays is actually um, The Slab Boys by John Byrne. I saw it a couple of months ago. Um, I'd read it a long time ago, um, but I saw it a couple of months ago. Now, John Byrne actually was a um, graduate of the Glasgow School of Art in terms of the background that he came from and that's very much what's inspired both his his writing and then um, also like his work and the, the way that he works is so different to people coming from maybe a more traditional background who um, are coming from your slightly more middle or upper class whatever you want to call it um, background and I think that's fantastic that arts has a place for everybody which is not something that can be said for a lot of things in life. Well, I absolutely believe that in terms of regeneration of socially deprived areas, the arts are so instrumental um, in making people feel that they are not irrelevant and making people feel that, do you know what, there are people out there who agree with you. I think that's what um, Look Back in Anger by John Osborne really, really did for people. I think people suddenly had something they could identify with um, and I think that's absolutely fantastic and I think the arts provides that across all the arts. If we look at like the architecture, what they were talking about was um, the way that things have influenced and then the way that um, Charles Rennie McIntosh really, um, him and his wife, actually kind of created what we call Glasgow style which is um, kind of very flattened and uh, you know the kind of traditional Charles Rennie McIntosh stuff that you see everywhere and the thing is as well what the tour guide was saying is that Charles Rennie McIntosh kind of disappeared for a while and people really really forgot about him and it was the 20th century that he's um, that kind of scholars and things really brought them back up and that's what I did with my district. I'm trying to really keep this concise but I know concise really doesn't exist in my vocabulary does it? Um, but what I did in my dissertation was, was a cultural materialist analysis of um, a Shakespeare play in terms of his depiction of women in political positions of power. Um, now what cultural materialism means is considering something within the culture of um, the times that it first existed and the times that it was made, so in terms of like the historical, social, anyway it's a little bit more complicated than that but I'm trying to do this really quickly. But if we lose these things we can't study them! That is what I'm really getting to here and it's, it's just so important that we support the arts. So please, 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 if you're in Glasgow, book yourself on one of these tours. As I say, I'm going to link the one I did below because it was absolutely amazing. If you can't book yourself on a tour because I know they are a little bit expensive, it's like £19 for an adult, they do do concessions, student prices, senior citizens prices, etc. Um, but I know they are expensive, I'm, I, I totally understand that. Um, I thought it was brilliant value for money and um, the tour guide we had was absolutely fantastic. If anyone from Glasgow School of Art is watching this, it's Sunday the 17th of May so Whoever took your Glasgow style walk this morning, he was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm really sorry I didn't catch his name. Um, but, but, oh, he was fantastic. He was so up in his knowledge and I, I thought the, the price was, um, just to be totally honest, I didn't actually pay for it. I went, um, I was invited as a kind of PR thing. Um, but I would pay for it and my grand and I said are going to go on other ones that we are going to pay for. Um, and my grand paid for her ticket as well to come with me. So. Um, I'm not coming at this from a I vlogged about this so let's talk about it kind of thing. This is genuinely, I, well I would hope it's 
probably quite genuine. This is something I'm really, really passionate about. Um, so I thought the price was really worth paying, but I totally understand that not everyone can pay that. If you can't pay that, please just go to the theatre, like I said, and do it cheaply, or go to a museum, which can be free. Um, just please, please, please use the resources that we have for the arts. Please go and appreciate them. Please just go and show that there is demanding that there are people who are interested in this. Because do you know what? When we all turn into our parents, because whether we like it or not, it's going to happen, and we're all sitting on our boards in 40 years' time, round tables going, oh yes, it's very unfortunate that this has happened. Um, you know, discussing the fact that a building is damaged beyond repair, or that you know a theatre is shut down, as is quite recent to Glasgow or that we've lost a resource that we didn't want to lose. There's no point in sitting on a board in 40 or 50 years time talking about it if we didn't do something to to influence it now that it needs to be there, that people want it, that there is a demand for it, that people appreciate it. It's just so incredibly important. You know there was a quote on Instagram a couple of weeks ago um, that I really related to uh, one of my friends had put it up and it was when you're looking for an adult then you realise that you are an adult so you look for an adultier adult who's better at adulting than you and whilst you're doing that you sit and wonder how the hell did I become an adult and why does anyone think I'm qualified to adult like so true like I don't think you ever get to an age though where you feel like you're an adult I think becoming an adult is about finding something you want to take responsibility for about finding a passion about finding a cause if you stand for nothing you'll fall for anything and I so passionately believe that the arts are worth standing up for. I so passionately believe they provide a voice and they have history providing a voice to people who are not represented by the current kind of political representation of who is in government. Um, so please support your local art any kind of art I will be happy whether you go to the library and take a book out to support literature whether you go to a museum go to a play go to the opera go on a tour like just please guys let's we can't lose our art